We know how extremely capable raptors are off-road, but what are they like as a daily driver? <laughs> I'm Chris from Auto Academics, and today we're gonna take a look at this Ford Bronco Raptor. Now, full disclosure, while pretty much nothing has changed for 2024, this particular truck is a 2022 model year, so it's got quite a few miles on it. And while I had fun with it, I'm sure it had been beaten up quite a bit by other auto journalists. Also, if you want to see what a more normal version of the Bronco is like, you can check out our review of the Outer Banks trim at the link above. Now let's get started. Dwarfing everything else in our garage is this iconic silver metallic Ford Bronco Raptor. Standard features include LED headlights, signature daytime running lights, rigid fog lamps, and LED tail lights, heavy duty steel modular front bumper, heavy duty powder coated steel rear bumper, fender tie down hooks, black grille with amber marker lights, heated manual folding side mirrors with marker lamps, easy fuel capless filler, rock rail with removable running boards, reinforced swing gate, Haas 4.0 suspension with Fox Live valve dampers, gray molded in color hardtop, front and rear tow hooks, Dana 44 front and Dana 50 rear axles, tow hitch, plenty of skid plates, and remote start. The interior showcases a sport leather steering wheel with paddle shifters, leather gear knob, dual zone climate control, 60-40 split fold rear seat, all weather floor mats, eight inch digital instrument cluster, locking glove box, molly strap system, 12 volt power point, tilt and telescopic steering column, first and second row USB ports, ambient footwell lighting, 12 inch LCD center stack touchscreen, heated front seats, 360 degree camera, sync four with enhanced voice recognition. How can I help you? Ford Pass connect with 4G Wi-Fi, Hill Start Assist, rear view camera, auxiliary switches with pre-wiring, AM FM HD radio, Sirius XM with 360L, terrain management with goat modes, trail control, B&O sound system, mirror spotlights, wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, a bunch of grab handles, zone lighting, and keyless entry with push button start. Safety features include plenty of airbags, pre-collision assist with auto emergency braking and evasive steering assist, individual tire pressure monitoring system, lane keeping system, reverse sensing system, driver alert, rear occupant alert, bliss blind spot information system, and rear cross traffic alert. Optional equipment consists of the Equipment Group 374A that includes adaptive cruise control, heated steering wheel, connected built-in navigation, sound deadening headliner, and wireless charging pad for $2,695, 17-inch black forged bead lock capable wheels wrapped in 37 by 12 and a half BF Goodrich Baja Champion All-Terrain TA KO2 tires for $1,995, Raptor graphic for $1,075, keyless entry keypad for $110, interior carbon fiber pack for $1,725, and leather trim and suede seats for $2,495, give you a total MSRP of $80,190. So let's address some of the features of this Raptor. For starters, there's this two-piece grille with large lettering and marker lamps across the top. And this modular steel bumper has removable end caps for better clearance. Not to mention, it's strong enough to tow you, or more than likely, your non-Raptor driving friends out of trouble. This truck also has additional rigid off-road lamps that can be activated via the auxiliary toggle switches in the cabin. 
The front track width is 8.6 inches wider than a base Bronco, almost 10 inches including the fender flares, and it has a minimum ground clearance of 13.1 inches. That's almost 5 inches more than a base four-door Bronco, and quite a bit of that owes thanks to these huge 37-inch tires. Plus, if you peek underneath, you'll see those comparably huge 3.1-inch diameter Fox shocks. Enable the sway bar disconnect, you get a maximum wheel travel of 13 inches up front and 14 inches out back, 60% and 40% more travel than a base Bronco. Approach angle is 47.2 degrees, ramp breakover angle is 30.8 degrees, and departure angle is 40.5 degrees. Also, this Raptor has a max water fording of 37 inches. Open the dampened rear door, then lift up the window, and you'll find 33.4 cubic feet of cargo space. Fold the 60-40 split rear seat, and you get a total of 73 cubic feet in all. In case you were wondering, that's 10 cubic feet less than the outer banks trim we reviewed. Making this Bronco buck is a 3-liter twin-turbocharged EcoBoost V6 engine with stop-start that makes a strong 418 horsepower and 440 pound-feet of torque on premium fuel. It's made into a 10-speed automatic transmission that sends power through a Dana 50 heavy-duty Avantech 470 solid rear axle. Max payload is 1,100 pounds, and thanks to the new tow haul mode, max towing has increased to 4,500 pounds or 1,000 pounds more than a base model. Note that if you plan to use any bike racks on the back, you'll want to get an extender because the huge spare tire substantially minimizes clearance. The selectable four-wheel drive system features a two-speed transfer case with a 306 to 1 low ratio and a 67.7 to 1 crawl ratio. There are locking front and rear differentials, a disconnecting front sway bar, and trail control and trail turn assist are present too. All of this can be controlled independently or via the GOAT modes where you can select between Slippery, Tow Haul, Sport, Normal, Off-Road, Baja, and Rock Crawl. There's also a Trail 1 pedal drive, allowing you to go and stop using only the accelerator pedal while off-roading. When it comes to fuel economy, you've got to pay to play with this Raptor, as EPA ratings are 15 miles per gallon city, 16 miles per gallon highway, and 15 miles per gallon combined. While Auto Academics saw as much as 16.8 miles per gallon on the highway, we achieved an average of exactly 16 miles per gallon during testing on regular fuel, though premium fuel is recommended for best performance. The back seat is pretty much going to be the same as any other Bronco, so if you want more details, be sure to check out our review of the Outer Banks trim at the link in the description. Step-in height is greater though, and you'll also find the molly strap system on the doors and behind the seats. Up front is familiar too, with a design that's off-road focused and functional. The carbon fiber package is nice, if minimal, and the buttons and dials are rubberized to add a little weather protection when the top and doors are off. This steering wheel feels great with large plastic paddles that are easy to reach, and these seats are supportive and comfortable too. Like in the other Bronco, the b stereo is a mixed bag. Treble is bright and clean with an overall decent sound, but everything will fall apart if you listen to music with more complex bass. Oh well, guess it all can't be good. <laughs> so now that we've addressed all of that, it's time to take it out and see how it drives.
So, as I mentioned in my intro, this specific Bronco has almost 17,000 miles on its odometer, which is pretty high for a press vehicle. And because of the type of vehicle that it is, I know it hasn't lived an easy life. But with all that said, this Raptor appears to be holding up well. Surprisingly, there's very little road or tire noise in the cabin, even with these huge aggressive tires, but there is noticeable wind noise at highway speeds. This is something I didn't experience nearly as much when I reviewed the outer banks trim and that at a soft top. Maybe the soft top absorbs the effects of this brick shape better than the hard top. In normal mode, the suspension feels a bit bouncier than that other Bronco too. And honestly, I think the F-150 Raptor rides much smoother. But put it in sport mode and the weighty steering becomes heavier and the suspension gets stiffer. <laughs> Believe it or not, that helps to settle the body movement down and I actually prefer it. The exhaust becomes louder too, and the transmission will blip shifts as you decelerate. And it can be a lot of fun, as long as you don't mind using a bit more fuel. But if you use this as a daily driver, you probably will because fuel economy is rather poor. Of course, with 418 horsepower, something has to give. But if used as a weekend vehicle, I think I'm okay with that. The engine is torquey, if not fast, and it truly shines on the highway where you can open it up. As a side note, the exhaust is a bit buzzy, but that's fairly typical of a turbo V6. Fortunately, you can make it softer or louder if you choose, thanks to these individual buttons on the steering wheel. Overall, visibility isn't too bad once you get your mirror set up properly. Well, with the exception of the view out back, because like the fuel economy, that's fairly poor too. And navigating tighter areas can be challenging too. You see, the fenders for the most part are the same size as the standard Bronco, but the widened track, almost five additional inches on each side, can catch you by surprise because they stick out much further than the rest of the body. There's not really too much that I have to say about this Bronco Raptor as far as off-road is concerned because I don't have anything that could truly test its capabilities near where I live. I'm out here though on some fairly local service roads that you know are deemed for vehicles with significant clearance and obviously this thing is chewing it up like it's a piece of cake. <laughs> you know, the last time I was out here, I was in the Toyota 4Runner TRD Pro, and that handled it just fine, and this Raptor is that much more capable. All I'm using is the off-road setting on the GOAT modes, which has put me in four-wheel drive high, it's locked the rear differential, and that's pretty much all I've had to do. Besides that, I'm just cruising along. We've gone through a little bit of mud. We've hit some moderately sized rocks that we've had to go over that cars with lesser ground clearance would have totally been in trouble because they were moderately sized. But, um, you know, this Raptor handled it very easily. There's pretty much no rattles in here. You might hear a little something, but that's just for my camera gear, my tripod and stuff like that clanging about. But other than that, this truck is solid. It is, it feels secure. And to be honest, it feels way more confidence inspiring here as I travel off-road than it does when, <laughs> when I'm cruising on the pavement. It's not bad on the pavement, but it feels much better out here in the woods. Also, trail control is extremely helpful. While you're bouncing over all the rocks and roots, it can be a bit challenging to keep your foot steady on the gas, but this cruise control for off-road keeps momentum at a steady pace. 
as slow as one mile per hour if necessary to help you smoothly get through each obstacle. So there you have it guys, the Ford Bronco Raptor. It's a lot of truck and for most, a base, outer banks or even Everglades trim will be plenty. But in true Raptor fashion, if you have to have the most capable, imposing and gas guzzling version, this is your truck. So would you drive one every day? Let us know in the comments section below. As always, if you like this video, Give it a thumbs up, don't forget to subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you don't miss what we have coming up next. I'm Chris from Auto Academics. Thanks for watching.